Holidays are always a fun time, with fireworks, gift-giving, get-togethers, parties, excessive drinking and taking tandem swan rides with the ones you love. But now that insert most recent holiday here is starting on going over delete as appropriate and we're all in a holiday mood, why let things die down? What have we got to go back to? Work? Pfft. While games that don't take place on Earth obviously cannot have Earth-specific holidays like Christmas, Easter, Hanukkah or Diwali being that the respective religions do not exist in that world, there are several more obscure, dare I say it, fictional holiday celebrations from the world of video gaming that I say we should start to celebrate alongside our real ones. Yeah, it may seem like a desperate excuse for a few more days off work, but if you'll hear me out, they are actually very interesting. Okay, it's mainly the days off work thing, but still, should we look at some? I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video game holidays we should totally celebrate. Number 10. Feast of the Winter Star, Stardew Valley. In the peaceful farming community of Stardew Valley, there are a few different annual holidays, each marking the changing of the seasons. There's the Spring Egg Festival and Flower Dance, the Summer's Luau and Dance of the Moonlight Jellies, there's the Autumn's Spirit's Eve, and the Winter's Festival of Ice. But the Feast of the Winter Star is perhaps the most hotly anticipated event of the year. Named after the single bright star seen in the winter night sky, the Feast of the Winter Star takes place in the center center of Pelican Town on the 25th day of winter. Much like another, uh, similar winter celebration, it involves the rather familiar traditions of decorated fir trees covering the place with sparkling lights and gift giving, as well as eating and drinking too much and having to chat with a lot of people you purposefully choose not to speak to the rest of the year. Like all good secret Santas, sorry, I mean uh, secret gift exchanges you're given a townsperson to buy a gift for. While you can give practically anything as a gift, you yourself will receive an interesting selection of presents, ranging from a legendary star drop to a pile of rocks or wood. Oh, thank you, Robin. I just gave you 200 of these to upgrade my house. Don't be surprised if you get a pine cone next year, then you can grow your own tree instead of re-gifting sticks, you bastard. Number nine. Unnamed Gift Rot Christmas Equivalent, Undertale. While Christmas does technically exist in the Undertale universe, down in the monster world, there is another non-denominational totally not Christmas holiday to celebrate. And while Narnia may always be winter but never Christmas, far beneath Mount Ebert, the town of Snowdin seems to be living wizard's eternal hell of I wish it could be Christmas every day, taking part in a seemingly endless winter celebration to match their seemingly endless winter. Santa does seem to also exist in this universe, with several references to him contained in the game's flavour text, so add deep underground to his million mile journey in one night. Centred around the grumpy yet gift-loving deer monster Gift Rot, who lives in the pine forest around Snowdin, the holiday was started after some meddling kids, presence of Scooby Snack loving dog unconfirmed at this time, covered the unfortunate beast in a load of tinsel and general tat. We know how he feels. So to honour the unfortunate deer monster, the other monsters of Snowdin decorate trees and give one another presents in an attempt to atone for their animal cruelty-based sins and appease the angered deer. Still, it's probably for the best that you emptied the underground by the end of the game, as there's no way to know how long it might have been before the infuriated ruminant exacted its long-awaited revenge. Number 8. Unification Day XCOM 2 Marking the 20th anniversary of the forces of Earth uniting with the alien race known as the Elders, Unification Day is like the 4th of July, only marking when your home was forcefully taken over by an alien invading force who'd then go on to spout a revisionist history. The United Forces' thematically appropriate name, Advent, derives from the Latin coming, but if you ignore that, the terrifying connotation, then it suddenly becomes incredibly festive! Hooray! While there isn't much actual footage of the celebrations, we like to imagine that Unification Day involves a lot of heavily monitored parades, street parties, get-togethers and large meals where you can attempt to strategically avoid Aunt Edith and her opinions about the degeneracy of today's alien youth. Just try and ignore the patrols lining the street parades, compulsory security scans and the fact that no one you know has ever been part of the apparently co-alien and human-led advent and everything will be fine. Number 7. New Life Festival Elder Scrolls Online 
MMOs always take one of two routes when it comes to celebrating a holiday that can't logically exist in the world of the game. While some simply say, sod it, and just add themed skins and rewards and call it a holiday event, others put more thought into how the celebrations tie into their game's universe, inventing an equivalent holiday with similar traditions and outfits so players can run around in Santa hats and elf shoes without destroying the canon lore with questions of why a barbaric orc from the Badlands would know who Jesus is. Elder Scrolls Online combines both Christmas and New Year into one long holiday known as the New Life Festival that stretches from December to the start of January and is celebrated all across Tamriel. If you want to celebrate, simply pick up the Festival Scroll from the Crown Store for free, meaning that if you aren't a Christmas person, then that's okay. If you do want to join the festival, however, then you will be given festive-themed quests for festive-themed rewards like festive mementos, festive mounts, festive recipes for festive dinners with the festive family, and festive uh, crafting materials as well. Number 6. Reclamation Day Fallout 76. Ah, oh, we're on a streak too. 25 years since the dropping of the atom bombs on America by whoever it is we're blaming at the moment comes Reclamation Day, where Vault 76 will open its hermetically sealed vault doors once more unto the world, and its inhabitants shall spread across the abandoned country to reclaim it from the Liberator Mark II's, Super Mutants, and Scorch Beasts that have happily made it their home for the past two decades. Unlike the other entries on this list, however, this holiday has overlapped with the real world, as in 2018 the state of West West Virginia announced that it would officially recognize the 14th of November 2018 as Reclamation Day to coincide with the totally flawless launch of the multiplayer RPG. However, it wasn't recognized enough to get anyone a day off work, so when will the lies end, Todd? Fallout is all about killing people and getting stuff for free, which is… <laughs> ironic, really, considering. And Reclamation Day is no different. With the vault deserted and the Overseer having legged it, everything is up for the taking. While stim packs, blood packs, food and bullets may not be traditional stocking fillers, they are rather practical gifts for when you step outside into the wasteland beyond. At least, that's what I told my sister when I gave her that half-eaten bar of chocolate from the 50s for Christmas. You're very welcome, sister. Number 5. Star Festival. Mario Galaxy. While Stardew Valley's star-related festival revolved around a single symbolic star in the sky, the Star Festival in Mario Galaxy's universe oh, galaxy, universe, is a celebration of what, in a less bloodless and less wholesome universe, would probably be an apocalyptic event of universal uh, uh, galactic proportions. Once every 100 years, a comet passes over the Mushroom Kingdom, showering the city in stardust, star bits, and star chips. While we would call this a cataclysmic event not seen since the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, Mario and his friends prefer to call it a festival. Got to admire their optimism. Once all of the wayward star pieces have been found by Mario and his friends, they can then be formed into a star. Which is sort of like if every Guy Fawkes night we had to collect a load of gunpowder that will magically transform into actual Guy Fawkes. Listen, I don't know what's going on with your family tree that makes you related to a giant star with eyes, Rosalina, but I'd get on the phone to who do you think you are, if I were you. Anyway, it looks like a fun festival. Number 4. Millennial Fair Chrono Trigger Rather than a street fair for pumpkin spiced lattes, avocado toast, and a load of 30 year olds everyone keeps assuming are still 15, the Millennial Fair in Chrono Trigger is actually a celebration of a thousand years since the Kingdom of Guardia was founded. The center of Lean Square is set up with lots of marquees and tents, as well as many different games, including a strength bell, a drinking game, a robot race, and a haunted house slash tent. Winning these games earns you silver points, exchangeable for money, posable dolls, and cats, which sort of goes against the tradition of poor quality stuffed toys and half-dead goldfish. If it all looks a little bit familiar, we'd like to imagine that Stardew Valley and the Kingdom of Guardia have the same event organizer. While the Millennial Fair is a very specific celebration celebrated on a very specific date, luckily, time travel exists in the Chrono Trigger universe, so it is possible to attend regardless of the time you would normally inhabit. And while running into your other time traveling self every year can be tricky, I personally enjoy a bit of past self, future self, hide and seek, where no one wins and the only losers are the rest of reality should we ever accidentally touch and obliterate the known universe. Number 3. Starlight Celebration Final Fantasy XI and XIV 
Being the two MMOs in the series, Final Fantasy XI and XIV were faced with the same choice as The Elder Scrolls Online, and, like The Elder Scrolls, they chose the more creative option. Well, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't be on this list, would they? <laughs> While the New Life Festival in The Elder Scrolls is more of a general New Year slash winter celebration, Final Fantasy's Starlight Celebration has a rather more in-depth lore to explain its familiar customs, such as Santa Claus outfits, Christmas trees, and random snowmen dotted around despite their being no snow on the ground. Actually, we'll have to get back to you on that last one. As with a lot of games, the Starlight Celebration changes from year to year, with activities ranging from ringing bells in different locations to delivering ice shards and acting as gift giver to all the children throughout the region, which earns you a variety of specially themed items, mounts, and songs. Begun in the icy and mountainous Curthus region, the Starlight Celebration marks the annual commemoration of when the orphans of the Dragon Song War were protected by kind hearted knights of Ishgard, who allowed them to huddle inside their red and white cloaks for warmth. Every year since, the tradition of wearing bright red coats has continued, as well as giving gifts in tribute to the kindness shown. And isn't that what Christmas. I mean, um, isn't that what Starlight Celebration is all about? Incidentally, apologies if I murdered some of the pronunciations there. I'm doing my best. Number two, A Day. Marvel's Avengers. As it's the beginning of 2020 and we still have to wait another few months for Square Enix's Crystal Dynamics Disney's Marvel's Avengers to be released, you must please allow some speculation on our part here. While it sounds more like an Alcoholics Anonymous Away Day scheme, the true nature of A Day is still yet to be revealed. All we know right now, game plot wise, is that it results in some kind of catastrophic incident around the unveiling of the Avengers' new San Francisco headquarters and helicarrier. Now, I don't know about you, but I like a good party, I say, sitting recording this in a small room, avoiding all social commitments. So I imagine that the in-universe lore event will involve a number of activities that are fun for all the family. There might be a Miss Marvel face painting, pin the hammer on the Thor, a laser quest battle opposite Black Widow, and hide and seek with Ant-Man. Maybe ultimate frisbee with Cap, if he's free, you know, he's, uh, he's, they're busy guys. To be honest, we shouldn't have allowed all of them to organise their own activities. They will take it way too seriously and there are always far too many casualties for our public liability insurance to cover. At least that's what we would say if we didn't have the full backing of the Stark Foundation! Hey guys, who's ready to go trampolining with the Hulk? Number 1. Toy Day – Animal Crossing it may not be the most original name for a holiday, but Toy Day absolutely matches the cute, innocent aesthetic and gameplay of the Animal Crossing games. Occurring on the 24th of December, Toy Day is another rather transparent approximation of Christmas. But against the insistence of nearly every single Christmas movie ever, the true meaning of Toy Day isn't so much about the joy of being around family or the thrill of general. <laughs> no, it's mainly about getting free stuff. Thank you very much. While the way Toy Day is celebrated changes slightly from game to game, it is mainly about helping Santa, I mean Jingle the Reindeer, by delivering presents to all of the villagers in town. Typical, it's the one time of year you work, Jingle, and you still can't be bothered to do it yourself. In a world where inexplicably every object is shaped like a leaf with a bite taken out of it, getting gifts is a bit of a gamble as you don't really know anything about what it is you're actually getting until you actively remove it from your inventory and place it into your house. What the hell, Marina? You know for a fact everything in my house is bright pink. Can you get me a blue chest of drawers? A blue chest of drawers in a pink house. Do you even know me at all? I thought what we had was special. And that's our list. Are there any other video game holidays that you would like to celebrate? Let us know all about them in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.